All right, welcome back to Fuck Us Talks, podcast episode 39. Today on the show, literal Muppets are trying to get your kids vaccinated. Luckily, some people are pushing back and protesting that. In this week's Cringe of the Week, the teachers continue to overshare with 11-year-olds, while trans people continue to disrespect our veterans. We debunk some bogus claims of racism out of Michigan, and we take you behind the scenes here in Fleck Us Talks and tell you why there wasn't an episode last week. Drama alert. All this and more. It's Fleck Us Talks, the podcast, episode 39. Ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And I should speak louder than words, but at the same time, words speak louder than action. Because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fuck the Stops podcast featuring Richard Grant. One for one on the intro. As always, before we get into the show, this week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Public Square, the Public SQ app available on Google Play and the App Store. Guys, are you looking for a database of companies in your area or nationwide that are like-minded and share your patriotic values? Well, do I have the app for you? The Public Square app does exactly that. You can download the app for free. You can look through all these businesses locally or nationwide, and you can find ones that share your America First values. You can upload your business to the app for free, which is a huge thing. You can join the community online and be more deliberate with your dollar. Stop giving your money to companies that hate you. Start spending your money and your dollars wisely. Support businesses that support you. And long-term, let's build our infrastructure and let's build our culture around people that share our America First values. Public Square app is available on the Google Play and App Store. Links are in the description. Download it today. Tell them Fleck has sent you. So, yes, we are back from a week hiatus. What happened? What was the drama? Why was there no episode? Why People stormed off set with the police called. Mm-hmm. Body no cam footage. What exactly happened? Obviously, none of that. I just went on vacation with my family. Lovely time. Yeah, I had a great time. I went to Martha's Vineyard with my family. It was a lot of fun. Spent most of my time fishing. Which nice. I enjoyed very much. Biggest fish you caught? Anything to report? Yeah, I got some stuff to report. It was actually funny because I was like fishing the whole time on the beach, just like surf casting. Mm-hmm. And everyone in my family is like, oh, like you're so patient. Like it's so like it's so stoic. Like you're you're fishing and yeah. you're patient the whole time. And it's like I have nothing else to do. It's not stoic. This is the gambling part of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to yank out a tuna. I want to bring a shark on shore. You're there for that hundred X upside. Yeah. I'm there exactly. I was basically just like any fish. I caught, I would just chop into chunks, put on a huge hook with a metal leader, and launch out as far as I could, <laughs> trying to yank a shark. Hey, did not yank a shark, uh, but it was a lot of fun. I caught a bunch of striped bass, um, which was very cool. And Martha's Vineyard is actually a pretty cool place. I don't know if you've ever been. I have not. It's like you take a ferry to get there. It's a literal island. Mm-hmm. Uh, tons of people. It goes back generations, like hundreds of years. People just pass their houses down over and over. I know they're like living in basically the 80s or yeah, something. Yeah, 80s, like, 90s, all these old cars. There's no Uber Eats. Everyone, It's just like there's America. There's no Uber. There's no anything to yeah. interfere. It was America before we gave it away. Hey. Very liberal place too. So obviously after the vaccine takes its course, I think we head to Martha's Vineyard. It's empty now. Spend the first month clearing out the bodies, mm-hmm. going house to house, making sure all the bodies are properly. Mass graves, roll them in. A couple mass graves. <laughs> we'll set a thing up. We'll do a little, we'll put like a thing, uh, kind of paying homage to what happened, the culture, whatever. And then there'll be like an auction for all the houses, but without money. It'll just be like, who wants what house? Make your claims. I'm going straight to Obama's house. <laughs> <laughs> that one's going to be mine. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Mostly fishing, which is good. I did some spear fishing. How'd that wh- go? Which was interesting. It was actually funny because we had a, like three different spear guns. And there was one that had like an easy notch to pulled the spear back to Mm -hmm. and that was the one my dad was using and then the other one was like really hard to pull the thing back so my dad pulls his notch pulls the spear back notches it up and super easy and then i'm trying to do mine and i I can't do it how'd you do that dad he's like just do it just pull it back and i'm like damn like does he just have this dad strength that i don't have and i'm like trying my hardest and then i we eventually realized that his the effort it takes to pull his spear back was like half of the mine, yeah. and he tried to do the spear gun I was using, 
and he couldn't even pull it back. So you're the dad now. I'm the dad now. You have dad strength. Because <laughs> I was pulling it back, and literally every time I pulled it back, it was like the worst experience of my life. I had to put the gun here, and I pulled it. It was just like, Ugh! I like, would just break. Like, I would just barely get it every time. And then like my dad tried to use my gun without realizing that there were different notches. And he was like, dude, how did you get that back? <laughs> like I was out there and I couldn't do it. <laughs> From joke to hero in 20 minutes, I yeah. guess. Yeah. But the whole time I was like, damn, like my dad's so strong and like that dad strength is something that hasn't settled into me yet. But I, I had it in me the whole time. Yeah. Um, it was pretty good. I taught my little niece. Uh, a trick we were eating italian cookies that were like vanilla and then half dipped in chocolate with the sprinkles so it's like obviously there's a good side and a bland side so in the beginning i was like hey you want to split this cookie with me and she was like yeah i broke it off gave her the bland side <laughs> ate the good side and then i eventually taught her like hey the best side is the frosting side snap in half leave the bland side in the box it's a joke people laugh and you get the best part of the cookie <laughs> so i taught her that my sister was very upset uh, that I did that. Um, yeah, setting her on a path to be overweight. Almost well, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, here's your uncle's jokes. Your, here's your t techniques that I use. And it's just like, there he is. You, <laughs> there's Uncle Fletcher. <laughs> you can become like me. Um, but she's not on that path. She's literally 29 pounds. I know. So it's like this little person who's like got a developed brain and can talk, but also is just 29 pounds, which is hilarious. Uh, went to an ice cream shop. That was another highlight of the trip. Uh, the place had like tons and tons of flavors. Mm -hmm. That was like their selling thing, like all these different flavors. 101 different flavors. And I went there and I just said, uh, one scoop of vanilla on a wafer cone, please. And they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> We've never seen that before. My my version of that is the little kid soft serve with just uh, rainbow sprinkles. Yeah. I love that. It's so, classic. It's pure Americana. Little kid stuff. Yeah. And then I posted like, oh, if you know, you know, like the vanilla flavor, which is like, you know, classic, whatever. But there was no, there's nothing to know. Nobody it was knows. Purely, Everybody knows. Yeah. It it's was vanilla. purely a bit. It was a bit. It was basically the moment in time exists forever. I talked to the ice cream person and I ordered the most basic order ever they probably have never even gotten that order like in a week they probably get that order once like yeah. for like an old lady or someone with like a sensitive palate well sometimes it's nice to go back to those little kid foods mm -hmm. you ate like i've been i've been doing the salami sandwiches where it's just salami cheese mayo yeah little kid up. mayo with anything i'm always looking for that um the spear fishing was good regular fishing was good i caught cool striped bass there's a rule on striped bass now it used to be like a keeper is anything over 28 inches, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're looking for the pigs. Yeah. Now there's a rule where it, like you can only keep it between 28 and 35. And anything over 35, you have to put back because it's like a, a female that yeah. can breed. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But it's like I'm always I'm trying to catch the fish. Yeah. And then I catch the fish and well, I have to put it, it back. Right? Yeah, you can hold it. So here's me with and the fish I caught. they tell us they can't hold no stripers. So Billy Joel was right. And there's no sense in sword fishing here. Yeah. There's no island left for islanders like me. I get that now. That's crazy. Billy uh, Joel predicted this. And then, yeah. So it was like basically fishing, but instead of enjoying like the sport and relaxing, it was more gambling. Even on the boat. Yeah. I get my, that. I get that. Yeah. With my brother-in-law on the boat, we're fishing. Uh, and every time he'd hook up with a fish, I'd be like, is it big? How big is it? <laughs> I might want you to be like, it's huge. Um, and then I was doing little side action, little side bets. So it's like I would do uh, 15 to 1 odds. Mm -hmm. And I would say, give me the odds on me catching a fish in the next 15 seconds. So my brother-in-law would be like, 15 to 1. I'm like, all right, 10 bucks. One, 1,000. Two, 1,000. Three. <laughs> so I lost like 30 bucks there. Uh, and then I went spear fishing. Well, you got to do the gambling on which rod's going to hit, too, if you're trawling, right? Yeah, but we kind of were holding the rods. Okay. So it's like I had mine. I took the 15 second bets. Gotcha. Uh, we went spear fishing, which was cool. I was in the water and, you know, there's rules to certain fish you can't kill. Uh, there's certain fish sizes you need to maintain. So, of course, I follow the rules. I'm in the water. I see another person spear fishing with us. Right. He's like in the water as well. No big deal. We're searching around. I come up on a fish. I blast it. Yeah immediately hit it first hit of the day i'm like oh cool the fish is going crazy and then i pop up and someone's like hey i'm over here just want to make sure you saw me and i'm like oh hey what's up and he's like yeah you know, there's a good amount of fish in here and i'm like oh i think i just shot one and, he, and he's like oh it was a, a black sea bass or whatever and i'm like yeah i think so 
He goes, what do those have to be, like 17 inches? And meanwhile, I have like this fish like flailing on my line right next to me. 12-inch <laughs> fish flailing. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, like 17 for sure. Like that was the first fish I shot at. So I changed like the wording, like the first fish I shot at and basically lied to his face because I didn't want him to like, let me see the fish you got. Um, so I'm like, yeah, that's the first fish I shot at. Uh, <laughs> the fish is like flailing next to oh me. So then I was just like, all right, see you later. Good luck. And I swam away, took the fish off on shore. It wasn't the fish he said. It was like a porgy or something mm. that didn't have a size limit. Mm. But I didn't even know what fish I shot. And then I just chopped that fish up, put it on the metal eater, try to catch the shark. Never caught the shark. So that's what happened. That's why I wasn't here last week. It sounds like a fun trip. It took a week to myself, enjoyed it, got to see my family, hang out with the little people in my family. It was a lot of fun. Uh, And that's this week's housekeeping. Nice. That's this week's housekeeping. But part of housekeeping, which was a very popular segment from last week, is the What Happens Next segment. So we have a new What Happens Next segment because everyone liked it from last time. We're not going to blow this segment out and make people tired of it and bored. We're not going to do this every week. Yeah. But we will do it this week. We have a couple of what happens next situations. Our first one is the birthday surprise. So here's the still image of a person bringing over sparkling birthday, sparkling birthday cake. Shit. Looks like a normal situation, right? Yep. They singing happy birthday. What happens next? A, nothing. It's a normal birthday song. This post got nine likes. B, the sparkler catches a lady's hair on fire. C, a random fight crashes into these people d a pit bull comes and chases the guy with the sparkler what would you guess sparkler hair on fire i it's too obvious i don't think and then there's that other sparkler video that went viral so i don't think it's that okay fair uh what were the pit bull seems a little too right up my alley yeah that's what i would make up that's what you would make up so i'm out on that what were the other two nothing Uh, happens it's a normal birthday song and the post got nine likes you know what's the other one and uh a fight crashes into them where is this do you know i think it's in a city somewhere Uh oh (laughs) all right i'm gonna go with fight it was all right let's play the clip brings it out immediately there's a fight (laughs) (laughs) oh they knocked it over dude this guy yeah it's a mess a fight crashes into them oh my god and that's the birthday surprise you good good job one for one I, I feel like you didn't try that hard on your alternatives. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I guess that's fair. Don't that's say fair. stuff like that. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. What happens next? Big catch. Okay. Big swordfish catch. Okay. Here we have a swordfish hung upside down by its tail. That's what I'm Everyone thinking. is watching. It's a huge thing. Looks like they're weighing it. What happens next? A, the swordfish pukes tons of little bait fish and they just fall out of his mouth onto the ground and there's a ton of little bait fish that fall out of his mouth. Okay, I've never seen that. B, so. that guy, the guy standing through in the back with the with the white shirt, I see him. he gets pushed into the water because someone behind him who's gigantic gets pushed forward in line and he falls in the water. Okay. C, the fish is kind of rotting, the bottom falls off and it splits into two pieces, 10% remaining, 90% falling to the ground. Okay. Or D, a car towing a jet ski drives through the crowd and the swordfish and into the water. Whoa. So it kind of comes from this side of the screen, boom, 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 falls in the water. Okay, I'm gonna say that these people are professionals at hanging swordfish like this, and it, they don't have accidents like that. It doesn't just snap in half 90% on the ground. Okay, so you're saying C is gone. C is gone. A, uh, it pukes the bait fish. B, I've never seen that, so no. Why would it puke the bait fish? Well, if you're holding it upside down, wouldn't whatever it's in the stomach kind of fall to the... Yeah, but you're pushing me towards it now, so okay. I'm away from that so one. So B, that guy gets... So you're either at B, this guy gets pushed in by someone behind him, That's or a car with a jet ski towing, qualified captain style, gets pushed in the water. A car with a jet ski, too specific. It could happen, but I'm going with this guy in the white shirt gets pushed in the water. All right, let's play the clip. B, final answer. Yep, lock it in. (laughs) 
The fish rots and the bottom falls out, splitting into two pieces, 10% remaining on the rope, 90% falling to the yeah, ground. I, I thought these guys were pros. I thought they had a system. I thought, you know, the tail was strong and that's why they did it. So you got me there. It's 100% what happens. I was using uh, mackerel as bait a lot this weekend. And basically, if you don't put it on ice, if it's out in the sun for like more than 10 minutes, it just becomes smushy. Gotcha. You can just break it into pieces and that's what happened. There. So these guys didn't ice it down. Yeah, they nice it down. I think that's kind of something that happens maybe more often than you think. All right. Last one. Um, I feel like I was close. Yeah, you were very close. No, I was wrong. I well, was the first thing you said was it can't be the answer. You said it can't be C. These guys are professionals. Yeah. So you were close. I was close. In that it was one of the four. You knew, <laughs> you knew it was one of the four. Uh, last one. Um, scooter jump attempt. All right, I'm looking at the screenshot. So this guy's got a ramp attached to a BMW car looking. A Bugatti or something. A Bugatti or something. He's got a scooter. It looks like he's about to attempt a jump. Uh -huh. What happens? A, the ramp gives out and he breaks the driver's side window with his head. B, he goes to vertical and lands on the windshield. Okay. C, he nails it perfectly. D, a cat runs across the driveway, knocks into him, knocks him on the ground, and prevents him from doing the jump. Well, this screenshot, I'm going to say he's too close right now. The cat can't come out of anywhere. The ramp looks strong. I don't think it's going to fail. I'm going to go with it goes too straight vertical, and he goes right up and lands right on the windshield. That's just what it looks like from a physics perspective for me. Uh, I mean, and it is obviously in this section for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's see. Nailed it perfectly. Yeah, I, I should, I, dude. I should have, I should have chose that. He nailed it's it like perfectly. You, you don't go over a Bugatti or a BMW or whatever that is a nice car unless you're a pro. So that was my bad. Yep. So what'd you get? Two out of three. One, One out, out of three. three. One out of three. And do we learn any lessons? We follow any patterns? We recognize any patterns? No. No, uh, not really. Hey, viewers watching, do we know any patterns? It's always C. It's always C. Is it always C? All right, it's there you always go. C. It's always C. It's always C. <laughs> I was going to say, I know there's something obvious here. Which takes us out of what happens next. We're going to have kind of another what happens next in bonus land. Uh, there's always a bonus land episode every week. So patreon.com slash fleckus or YouTube join links in the description for bonus land. Uh, extra 20 to 25 minutes of the show every week comes out on Mondays. Moving on, out of housekeeping. That was a unique housekeeping. That wasn't our usual housekeeping format. That was crazy. We usually kind of rattle them out and do all these random things, but we kind of had to cover the drama for why there wasn't a, a show yeah. last week. And yep. then what happens next? That was housekeeping. <laughs> Getting us into our first story, uh, Elmo, everyone's favorite red Muppet, uh, right after Eric Swalwell, got, got <laughs> vaccinated. Um, he's kind of a red guy, right? He's got like... He's kind of like a thumb guy. He's like a stupid face, like <laughs> the Matt Damon misprint. Matt Damon misprint. Yeah, we've said this before. I, <laughs> um, so first they did the January 6th song, The Muppets. Of course. And now The Muppets are getting vaccinated and trying to convince the kids to get vaccinated, which obviously is the simulation is nodding to me. Mm -hmm. This is a nod to me in the simulation. Um, I had no idea the Muppets were going to play this much of a role in the propaganda of America these days. Like, that's crazy. I kind of knew. You knew since 2019. <laughs> I've been calling these people Muppets since before it even started. Um, it's yeah, it's interesting because people they're using the Muppets to convince kids to get the vaccine when a Muppet is literally a sock with someone's hand in it telling you what to do. Yeah. And it's like you're going to listen to a person off screen hopefully with no agenda, with their hand in a puppet, being like, get vaccinated, you should get vaccinated. Talking in a stupid voice, <laughs> like on purpose. Like off screen, a person with hopefully no agenda, their hand in the, a sock saying, you should get vaccinated. And then the whole episode's brought to you by Pfizer. Yeah, so, <laughs> so bad. So it's a little... It's a little weird, if you ask me. A little dystopia. A little dystopia yeah. world. We're advertised, like, we're... The USA is the only or one of the only countries where you can actually advertise pharmaceuticals on TV, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it's like, now we're going to kids. We're going, we're cutting out the parents, the middleman, going straight yep. to the kids through Elmo. Yeah. Pretty dystopian. Exactly. It, exactly. It's very dystopian. We're, we're listening to the, the sock puppet 
but also we don't know who's telling them to say what for what reason. It's like, yeah. you know, when you trick a kid to eating food and you're like, oh, here comes the train. The airplane and then yeah. switch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's pretty much like that. Um, but with, uh, I guess it's owned by Disney. Yeah. Darker, uh, more consequences. And then there is a vaccine site in New York that is getting protested. Uh, check out this scene. This is a person bringing their child to the vaccine site. In Times Square. In Times Square. Don't do it, guys. Guys, I'm begging you not to vaccinate your kids. It's been two this years. lady, these people with masks on, this is basically like sums up New York. This is what happens when you have like uh, you're scared and you have a scared household and you're a man and you can't keep your household in line and you can't control your wife and she's scared and she doesn't know how to be, feel safe and secure again. So and she her thinks, manic stuff drives and she's what, like, the what do we do? Doing. Like, uh, we're so scared of COVID. Like, we have to get the kids vaccinated. And the husband, because he's a pussy, New York pussy guy, he's just like, okay. And we put my mask on outside. She's the boss. Yeah. And yeah. that's what you get. Yeah. You get, even. you have your manic wife is running the show and they're going to inject your kids with who knows what because she's scared and you can't calm her down. Unrelated, but related. Do you see all the myocarditis numbers from like 2019, 2020, 2021, and then 2022? I haven't, but. I'm sure the graph, if it goes from 2019 to 2022, I'm sure it goes like this. <laughs> Haven't seen it. Yeah. But I'm guessing. Which takes us out of that section. Yeah. Good course. to see the people protesting. Obviously, injecting your kids with this vaccine is insane. They're not even really affected by the virus. They don't really catch it or die from it that much. Uh, so it's just like a cope for people who are manic and scared mm -hmm. and have been frightened by Don Lemon uh, and the literal Muppets. Yeah. I saw Klaus Schwab goes, we won't have any safety until everyone is vaccinated. And it's like, nobody elected you. This sounds like something the bad guy in James Bond would say. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly in that accent. Yeah, exactly. So moving on. So obviously, July 4th was earlier in the week. Uh, we had a lot of clips from that. A lot of W's and a lot of L's. Yeah. I'm extremely disappointed. Usually I'm hoping to see some sort of fireworks accident, some mm -hmm, sort of hand mm -hmm. blown off, some sort of craziness, and I didn't see any. Yeah, we got some. We're going to kind of play through them fast. Um, here we have the kids are doing some fireworks, and then it starts to blow up, and then it starts to light the pile of fireworks that they were planning on sitting off all at once, though. That's how that goes. Here's a kid who's lighting fireworks in his house. That's how that plays out. Here's people lighting fireworks and their dog comes in and starts spreading the fireworks places they didn't want to spread it to. Here's a video of a propane tank blowing up. That's what that looks like. I've always wondered what that would look like. I thought it would be a bigger explosion, to be honest. I was, yeah. I was always told it takes your house off of the foundation and launches it in the air. Who told you that? I don't know. I think That's when I was like little. cartoons? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you learn that from? I think it's so from funny. cartoons. Yeah. And then here's a pinata fail from over the weekend as this well. One, this one's my favorite. This one, yep. So this person <laughs> seeing the pinata. They're blindfolded. They're missing. They're missing. And then the contact comes on this back of this lady's head. Mm. And that woman was like playing it like like she knew she shouldn't be getting in range. And then yeah. she still got just domed. Like, There's no there was no audio either. Like, hey, Debbie, stop swinging for a sec. Yeah. We have to reset the pinata. Yeah. The, the pinata fell. The pinata fell. <laughs> like, who's in charge here? Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, this girl got sunburned really bad. Obviously, it's what happens. I this is kind of like me too. I'm always the sunburn guy. I, I tan very well. I have like really nice complexion. I'm part Italian. I tan no problems. But I also don't wear sunscreen and never have. So every time I've gone on vacation, even as like a little kid, and you overdo it, I would just get blown out the first day. Yeah. And then for like three days after, I'm in like a robe with aloe on my back, watching the free preview of Indiana Jones in the hotel. Like, <laughs> have you seen people talk about how like seed oils are what makes people burn too? Yeah, seed um, oils, and then you get burned, and then the microplastics your, your body uses to make new cells, and you get cancer. I think is the way it plays out. Leave it up to a scientist. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing murmurs. Seed um, oils. Here's another one. Here's one we can actually fully analyze. 
Uh, this guy uh, almost burned down a wedding with a sparkler. I called him Bizarro Sebastian Gorka. <laughs> uh, Bizarro obviously means backwards, uh, meaning Sebastian Gorka would never do anything like this. Sebastian Gorka, I am not making fun of you. We are friends. Dr. Gorka. Dr. Gorka. This is just Bizarro, Dr. Gorka. This is the opposite of what you would do, Dr. Gorka. This is not making fun of you. It's not a joke at your expense. This is the opposite of what you would do. <laughs> He's dancing, two sparklers halfway burned. Plant, plant starts going on fire. It almost catches that sheet thing on fire too. That lady saves it. And then he stomps it out. So what can we learn from this? He stomps it out when it's like three feet high. Yeah, <laughs> that's not even like a safe way to stomp it out. He's returning that tux tomorrow. <laughs> it's all melted up on the lower legs, melted, and the shoes are all melted. What happened? And he just keeps dancing. What, what, what do we learn from this? Well, it's like a lesson we could take from this. When things are going wrong, just keep dancing and keep moving. <laughs> No, no. I don't know. I was going to say, if things in your life are getting bad because of the decisions you've made, you should probably adopt a sense of urgency. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was that's the opposite of the lesson. Yeah, that's what I was going for. All right. That's fair. Um, but yeah, definitely Bizarro Sebastian Gorka, not Sebastian Gorka. That's the whole point. That's what Bizarro is. Uh, Joey Chestnut won the hot dog eating contest again. Yeah. Some guy. It was his flu game, right? It was his yeah. flu game. He, he was had, on crutches. Yeah. And then some guy came trying to protest, mm -hmm. and it was like some. I looked it up, and it was some vegan thing. Yeah, so it's a I, farm. It's like I, a farm in Indiana, right? Or something like ignored. that. Ignored. Don't care. If I thought it was going to be like about CERN colliding times, <laughs> uh, colliding us with different time loops and stuff. But these, these activists are getting crazier now. Like we saw the. And Joey Chestnut, shout out. Excellent reaction. No time for bullshit. You got to eat 63 hot dogs right now. Yeah. Um, and so we've seen it a lot more recently, too, like uh, people gluing their hands to paintings. I'm seeing more and more paintings. Mm -hmm. It's the season of virtue signaling on the backs of other people's great work. Yeah. You know, and yeah. nobody cares if you hold that Death Star sign and post it on social media. But if you take Joey Chestnut or if you piggyback off Da Vinci. Yeah, you're the gonna last get up. Supper, exactly. That's such a good point. They no. can't get their message out there with their own ideas. It's not a good pure. message. So you have to hijack something else and pretend. Yeah, you you can't stop traffic in Italy and not get dragged out. You know, mm -hmm. you, you got to upset someone or or piggyback off something. That's no, so true. Nobody cares about your message just by itself. That's so true. So yeah, Joey Chestnut threw him on the ground, even though he had crutches, and then continued to eat a sixty three hot dogs one by twenty. That's what he does, baby. And that's like July 4th in a nutshell, too, because I was thinking about this the other day. You know, usually if you're for dinner or something, you'd eat like a burger and fries mm -hmm. or, you know, you need a hot dog and some potato salad. Yeah. On July 4th, though, and like those types of grill weekends, three hamburgers, two hot dogs, yeah. fries, 10 beers. It's like, how do we even do that? Well, I don't. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, that is how it goes. You know, it's like that once every four months, we just eat seven dinners. Yeah, we eat way too much <laughs> in pork. One. Yeah, pork in and one. Um, There was another clip, uh, some Native American person who's saying, like, when it's July 4th and you're celebrating independence, don't forget the land you stole. Yeah. And it was just like some uh, Native American guy. Um, Finessed. Not stolen. Yeah. Finesse, buddy. Conquered. <laughs> you could when we first got here, you guys could have been like Yeah. Like and just you should have just nipped it in the bud. Yeah. Excellent lesson for us about invaders and you know like tolerating people coming so in true. unfettered. Stricter immigration, I would say. I'd Let's say learn so a too. lesson. So you can ask this Native American. So do you think that to maintain your nation you should have had a stricter Immigration policy? He'll go, yes, no immigrants. <laughs> oh, based. Thank you. <laughs> we'll take that. Too late now for you, but for us, we'll, we'll implement that. I've noticed uh, it was a lot more like pronounced of people on social media leftists being like, if you celebrate today, like, there's nothing to celebrate. Yeah, don't even look at me. Like, and it's like, what are you talking about? You hate America? You yeah. live here and you just hate America? That's got to be so miserable. It's like, shouldn't we be trying to find some common ground anywhere? So true. Uh, here's a let's get a little more uplifting. Um, here's a guy who's drinking the scraps out of the bottom of a garbage bag. Yeah, kind of a frat move. Uplifting. Uplifting. 
Kind of a frat move. <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> Disgusting. Yeah, this is kind of like fratty, like hazing almost. God yeah, we had to do some light hazing um, when we were pledging our fraternity in college. Yeah, nothing too crazy. We had to eat some dog food, uh, get shot with the BB gun while chugging a beer. Mm -hmm. I actually broke a record. I did a quick six, which is six cups of beer with the ring of fire, which is a full can of dip, top and lower lip. With a sidecar of Red Man Chew. <laughs> sidecar. <laughs> and then six cups of beer as fast as you could. I think the old record in the frat was like 18 seconds. And I did it in like eight seconds and just swallowed everything and then immediately puked it. Stuff like that. I wonder if that record holds up. Yeah. Or if anyone's keeping track of that record. Or if someone know. just told you, hey, that's the record. And it wasn't. <laughs> I think that's what happened. Yeah. And then there was one section of the hazing night. Where it was like someone, like the most disgusting guy in the frat had his feet in a mop bucket and the mop <laughs> bucket was full of beer and they were scooping beers out and making people drink it and they handed it to me and I was just like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, that's okay. Yeah. And I was like, hey guys, I'm doing this stuff, but I'm not doing that one. Yeah. 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 Uh, moving on, moving on. There was a vegan carrot hot dog. This isn't much of a story. This is just a picture. It looks like a hot dog, but it's a carrot. They want to be us so bad. They just want to be us and live like us. It's like, yo, if, if meat's not a big deal, why is everything you make trying to be meat? <laughs> yeah. Right? Like umami. It's like carrot with umami flavoring. And it's like, we don't give do, it up. Yeah, we just don't eat do, your veggies, bro. Exactly. Eat them on the side and get it over with. We don't do hot dogs that are carrot flavored. We turn our hot dogs so they look like a carrot. Doesn't even make sense. There was a parade. Uh, you told me about this. The Reddit post or the parade in oh, some yeah. small town. Can you read that? Yeah, this was interesting, and I'm sure the experience was uh, probably felt by a lot of people, but this is from Lomez on Twitter. I don't know who he is, like an Shout out. anonymous alt, nah, not even, anonymous right-wing account probably. Uh, July 4th parade in small town, deep red, middle of nowhere, wholesome patriotic flag waving, but then two floats at the end. Shit lib yokels doing Handmaid's Tale cosplay and lewd trans slash gay drag spectacle. Crowd not hostile, just confused, uncertain. These displays illegible to them. Easy to see how these places will get blitzed by these symbols and signs, all online phenomena brought into their world by the online brain poisoned activists set among them. Uh, and they won't even know what's happened. One day it's just there in the schools, etc. cetera. Uh, transmission of ideology is so different than it has been historically. They don't flow into places and take on regional color or filtering as they move through a social geographic landscape. They're just air dropped in trans flags falling from the sky. How do you stop this? And I, so true. I thought this was brilliant, like a brilliant analysis of how like the online kind of hive mind brain works. Yeah. And, and he, it, there's yeah. no discussion. There's no like, yeah. hey, hey, Mike, I think it would be good if we did some uh, if we did an inclusive diversity thing here. What if we try to hire a black fireman? You know, <laughs> instead, it's just like what are you're immediately dropped into like the most extreme leftists and then they're just. They're waiting for you to oppose it. Exactly. Like, be the bigot we said you were. Mm -hmm. And exactly. There's no organic uh, conclusion. There's no way where it's like, oh, these are our ideas. And then they gain some steam naturally and they get rolling and then people actually accept them and implement them. It's just airdropped in, inserted without any discussion over the top, above people's pay grades in the schools and, and the, the businesses, especially where it's just like, oh, this is what we're doing now because – HR sent us this new packet. 100%, which uh, which we developed on Reddit. <laughs> Just <laughs> like people from Reddit decided this. Exactly. Um, and w the one thing that I thought is, like, who who's in a small town parade, right? Like, there's, like, a military, like a VFW or w whatever. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called, VFW? So, so who who's in these parades? You know, it's like, oh, the fire truck. Oh, mm -hmm. there's the mayor. He's doing this. Oh, there's there's the veterans from the uh, from the town. Like they have their float. Wow, that's a Vietnam vet. There's a that, beauty queen. That guy's from Iraq. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's like some trans freaks doing a political <laughs> thing at the end. And then you and know, the handsmaids tell people that are mad because they can't kill the unborn. Yeah. A little bit of everybody. Hey, just just small town life. <laughs> so all equal floats. So I thought this was a brilliant uh, you know tweet thread from this guy. So these are obviously a bunch of L's from July fourth. There was. Was a W, uh, as promised, the snackle box. Mm. Look at this. This is a, char a charcuterie box that was kind of like a converted tackle box and has all the cheese and crackers and meats and pickles and olives. Yep. If someone gave me one of those, I would never forget it. 100%.
moving on, we are into cringe of the week. Our first clip from cringe of the week is a teacher who's oversharing with fifth graders who she obviously sees as her friends and equals. Check this out. Me telling my okay, students, my XBF you. texted me. Are you ready? Yeah. So there I was minding my own business and guess who texted me last night? My, my ex-boyfriend. He said, he said, I wish I, I, every single night I wish that I could text you, but I just don't frowny face. Oh, that's, can we see the text? He's definitely sus for sure. Why don't you get back I didn't, I didn't text him back. Should I? Yeah. Definitely sus for sure. The best thing this girl has going for her is she's getting manipulated by her ex-boyfriend. And she's in charge of the kids. What could this person teach anybody is my question. Yeah. It's like, oh, the lesson plan is don't respond right away. They, you don't want to come de- uh, come looking desperate. You know, it's like she's teaching them like what relationship techniques and stuff. These people are 11. Why are you sharing this info with children, lady? At least um, it's not as bad as other cringe of the weeks. At least she's not like a drag queen who's mistreating everybody and forcing them to do stuff. It's just another infantilization type thing, though, yeah. like where it's like uh, the caption, right? Oh, Did, yeah. Didn't yeah. you say the caption? One thing about. uh one thing about my class is my 11-year-old best friends and I will be spilling tea. My 11-year-old best friends and I, my kids, my best friends, my this. Uh, Aren't you a teacher? Like, come on. Where's yeah. the grammar? Where's the math? We, we do this every week, you know? And it's yeah. always a different tweak or a different teacher. It's like, teach uh, yeah. the subject. I would be running this class yeah. if I was in a fifth grade, 11 years old, and that was my teacher. I would... I would be every day. Oh, tell me about your weekend. Yeah. Oh, he texted you back. And then we would just waste half the class talking about whatever this girl wants to talk about. At least she's not a drag queen mistreating everybody. The next clip is actually a drag queen getting mistreated. It's a little bit backwards. Here we have a right wing drag queen yelling at the baby killers. Oh, and they push her down, push. <laughs> which is weird because we're told that drag queens are oppressed and LGBTs are oppressed. And you'd think a white woman pushing a drag queen to the ground would be big news. <gasps> but I guess it's not because this just proves that drag queens are just sexy LGBT pawns that the globalists and the elite use to push their political agenda. What was that? So, like, obviously, this would be a this would be worldwide news if it was the other way. But it just proves it's all about politics. Yeah, and they're just using people as pawns when they need them. Same with you know, oh, we want to hear black voices, and unless it's Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court, then it's like fuck that guy, he's racist. So it never really was about about black people or people who are oppressed. It's just about using those people to lead blocks so the George Soroses of the world and the Klaus Schwabs of the world can push their agenda in and have as little resistance as possible. Yeah, pretty much. Which is basically it. Uh, Takes us to our next clip. Halsey had a concert in Arizona, and she said, this is right after Roe v. Wade, she said that if, do you have the quote? No, I have the headline, Halsey fans walk out mid-show after controversial pro-abortion speech in Arizona. Yeah, so she gave some pro-abortion speech and was basically like, if you're uh, you're pro-life, you can get out of here. And then it's Arizona. People just started walking out and it's like, yeah, we're here to see you sing Chandelier. Do you know why I would never go to an event like this, Richard Rapway? The parking. The parking. Exactly. (laughs) I would not go to an event like this because 50,000 people are trying to park and go to the same place. And I just can't really do that. How did I know that? I can't do stuff like that. It's impossible for me. Moving on. Uh, TikTok nurses are back at it. Yeah, new wave, new wave coming. So this lady is a TikTok nurse, and she set up her camera, and they got some music playing in the background. Some real dramatic music. Which we can't play for copyright reasons, and then she's like crying and having a moment. She just lost a patient, which is sad. She lost a patient. But isn't that a little weird? How do I make this about me? 
So it's someone like, died. Yeah. Someone just died. It's like, oh, someone, like, we just lost a patient. He, he's gone. It's like, <laughs> you, like you set up your camera, <laughs> you hit record, and then you're going, oh, like, no. Ugh. And then you post it. And it's like, don't you have a? Don't you want to play the next play? Don't you have another patient who probably needs you right now? Yeah. Can't can't you learn something from that moment? Can't you say, hmm, what happened? Let's do a post op thing. <laughs> no, it's social media narcissism generation. Uh, Isn't that crazy? It's like, do you think when the person was like, she was losing the guy, that she's like, uh, I'm gonna get my phone ready. <laughs> it's yeah. like beep yeah. beep. Beep, and she's like opening TikTok. Like, yeah, beep. Mr. Bronson just flash uh, flatlined, and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, doctor, doctor's toe tagging somebody, and then it's like, just had to toe tag my patient, like crying eye, it's like a sign language ASL thing. Like when you had to kill your patient, but you still have more to do and post. Yeah, these people are nuts, man. People are crazy. People are crazy. Uh, last one. This is an actually upsetting clip. It's not funny. This guy is a dad, and his child was uh, prescribed antidepressants without him knowing and was taking them without him knowing. Teenager. I'm going to try to make this short. If you have teenage kids in Washington State, watch this video. I get a call today from the counselor at the high school, Snohomish, Washington. They proceed to say, your child, 15 years old, did not pick up his antidepressants um, at the end of the school year. I said, he, he's not on antidepressants. Like, what are you talking about? My kid is not depressed. I got that in my teeth. Forget it. And they proceed to tell me that they had a psychiatrist come to the school and give my kid antidepressants. And he's been on them for several months. I had no knowledge. I knew nothing about it. Knew nothing. Come to find out, it's 100% legal. They could do whatever they want with our kids in Washington State in the school program. Mm. The whole and the antidepressants, SSRIs, that's what pretty much every school shooter is on. Yeah. every like Pretty much every single time. You see like the charts of uh, white women taking SSRIs and it's like, you know, 1991. Boom! Yep. Straight line up. Pfizer marketing campaign really doing well. So, yep. And then exactly. Tucker covered this, too. And it's like Pfizer and all these pharmaceutical companies sponsor CNN, MSNBC. No deep dives coming from them anytime soon. Yeah, no to this. No exposés coming out. Uh, and some lady replied to that in uh, on Twitter. Every single one. My son's school pulled this with me. They called him doctor, had him prescribed reciprodone. I read the side effects, direct correlation to violence later in life. But I played the game. I filled the prescription, swapped it with mini Altoids. For the rest of the school year, the kid had no idea. Told his teachers when asked that he was taking his pills. Last day of school, um, and teachers are patting themselves on the back, saying with pride how much better he had been since they medicated him. Well, which is a nice way to get around it. Nice way to get around it, but like, kind shouldn't, of. You, shouldn't you just be able to say, "Nah, he's done. We're not filling anything. You don't, uh, you don't teach my kid that kind of stuff. Like, you're th this is school. Yeah, teach math. You'd think what, so. What's up with this power grab of like? You know, a public school, that's the state, you know, mm -hmm. the state is getting your kid and they're what they're doing a power grab for as much as they can. Gender ideology pills. Let's get them really into our system here. Yeah. And it's like, uh, is nobody uh, obviously we are and watchers of the show are constantly watching this. But are normal people who are just independent going like, huh. I guess that's pretty good. Or like, wh mm. what's the reaction there? I think there's just like a lot of like parents that don't fully care that are just in autopilot and phoning it in. And that's then, my day. Drop my kid off at daycare. Exactly. And then, there is a power grab. There is an opportunity. And the state is like trying to become the parents of the kids. We see it with the welfare programs and in the inner cities as well. There's like a very much a goal. The government is not your baby daddy. To make the government your baby daddy. Yeah. So that's what's going on. It's bad. All right. Cringe of this week is brought to you by our friends at Brave Books. Bravebooks.us. Use code FLECUS for some great summer reading for the kids in your life. Two of the books we're going to highlight today, Elephants Are Not Birds. It's a great book that teaches you the non-transgender lessons that the progressive teachers are trying to teach your kids. Uh, there's, in this book, an elephant who thinks it may be a bird because it likes to sing. And then the culture vulture, very good, very good character there. The culture vulture tries to convince, well, maybe you need a beak. Maybe since you like to sing, you're a bird. But in the end, the elephant realizes 
maybe I do like certain things, but I'm an elephant. Elephants are elephants. Smart. Very smart. And the other one, Little Lives Matter, very uh, appropriate now, especially with Roe v. Wade stuff happening. It teaches the value of life for children, how important children are, their gifts from God. This book highlights that perfectly. It's beautifully illustrated. It teaches your kids life lessons they need to learn in a palatable way. They're not going to shove it down their throat like the progressive teachers try to do and overwhelm them with confusing ideas. Bravebooks.us. Use code FLECUS for a big chunk off. They have the treasure chest, which has a bunch of cool stuff, or you can buy them a la carte. All these books are available a la carte as well. Or you can get a subscription where you sign up for the subscription and you get a new book every month. Check them out. The links are in the description. It goes a long way. Support the people supporting the show. Let's get back to uh, Urban Decay. We have a nuts Urban Decay this week. Uh, First is a story about a 60-person cruise fight. This is a fight on a cruise ship. I'm assuming Democrat run (laughs) cruise ship. It's Carnival Cruise. Democrat run Carnival Cruise Ship. Uh, that spanned five floors and lasted for over an hour. 60 people involved in this fight. The fight started over a threesome. Ah. So this is like, you know, just modern society. Like a a threesome starts a 60-person brawl in an enclosed dance floor. And uh, let's run the tape of this. This is like the, the nightclub. Everybody's in white. Everybody's dressed in white like it's their big, nice party. Security's doing nothing. Fight's going on. Security's not involved. Why would they be? And apparently this fight went all the way on until the Coast Guard showed up. So they had to, like, they were fighting until another boat came. <laughs> and people got off the boat and then onto this boat and then ended the fight. Yeah, the Coast Guard, like, escorted the ship to port. And, like, the police <laughs> had to talk to people. And it was like, well, where did this happen, uh, you know? Here's some clips from before the fight popped off. Uh, here's some twerking, some censored twerking. We had to censor this because one of the twerkers, I'd, I'd rather you say it. One of the twerkers has a butt plug in, mm. and it's visible. It's a see-through dress. There's a butt plug in. We're going to censor that because we don't want to show that kind of stuff. But that's the kind of degenerate atmosphere that was happening on this At lovely Christian person fight. What a nice vacation. What happened? Like, yeah. Oh, and this is actually also at the end of their vacation. So this is like day seven of the seven day cruise. You just went to the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. It's a great time. You know, you're probably slowing down yeah. drinking, you know, oh, we got to get back to reality soon. No nope. yeah. brawl time, threesome and brawl time. The Caribbean's lovely in July, I'm sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so true. Well, That's actually a riffraff crowd. You got to actually pay to go to on spring break instead of, uh, you know, waiting yeah. for the summer months. Take a winter trip to <laughs> the Bahamas. I promise it's better. Next is a Portland fight. These homeless people are fighting in Portland. There's a lady and a guy. And this is actually proof that not every urban decay is black people. People complain about that sometimes. Do they? Well, especially in culture. Oh, gotcha. They'll say like, oh, there's like not much diversity in uh, the urban decay section or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just send the clips out as they come in. Send me a video of a white guy doing something crazy and it will get posted. Yeah, we'll post it. And And look at Cringe of the Week. Do we ever say, oh, Cringe of the Week's all white people? Exactly. I I don't say that. Exactly. Um, And then, like, there's... There's a different type of urban decay where it's needle, junkie, homeless. That's often white people a lot. A lot. The San Francisco junkies, the, well, actually San Francisco is a little different. Half and half. Because those, they hate Asians over there. (laughs) (laughs) No, but like Portland, Seattle, those types, it's just like white junkie street rats, like stealing copper. And we're never saying, oh, here's white people. Oh, here's black people. We're just playing the clips as they come in. These Portland people are fighting in the background. You see their little homeless encampment, those little houses. It's not these people are fighting. It's this woman is backing up from an angry shirtless man outside of his presumed home. She's just facing him for the sole reason of not getting sucker punched. Mm. And then after their little altercation where he knocks the thing out of her hand, it pans up to the utopia. Yeah. Mini house. Here's that, everyone's the, the mini city, house. The city probably paid 300K per mini house here. That's like they, what I was going to say. They grossly mismanaged and it. It's like all oh, these mini houses. Like, why are they? Why are we giving mini houses to homeless? Like, regular people need houses. And people would say, oh, those houses are probably cheap to make. 
I'm sure it was some corrupt contract where I, those houses are like 200K I each. Know. A nice fat government contract yeah. to your brother in law. Yeah, we could make 10 for 2 million. Yep. <laughs> it's like no 10 bid, for 10 no houses. bid, no competition. <laughs> yeah. Just like, all right, Mike, you got it. Yeah, exactly. Um, moving on. So, yes, the, the, we proved that urban decay isn't just black people. Safe. I, I feel insulted that people would say that. Me too. Moving on, look at this senator candidate twerking at the beach. <laughs> oh, man. So this lady who's twerking here is a candidate for Senate. And I think she's state? a state senator, Rhode Island. She's a state senator already in Rhode Island and she, running for re-election. And she's running for re-election, yeah. And she's the one who... Um, Earlier in the year, or maybe early, yeah, earlier. She sponsored a bill. She sponsored a bill trying to teach kids about sex. Queer, inclusive, pleasure-based sex ed. Queer, inclusive, queer, inclusive pleasure-based sex. And you would hear that. Queer, inclusive, pleasure-based sex for kids. Education for kids, <laughs> right? So you'd hear that, and you'd go, hmm, that doesn't sound right. What else is this person up to? What else do they find appropriate? Yeah. And then they're twerking at the beach. On 4th of July. Because <laughs> they then, don't care. There's nothing. Nothing so, matters. And then you can kind of start connecting the dots. Correlation. You come to some conclusions that maybe this person isn't the most responsible. Not exactly qualified. Not exactly like a candidate caliber mm -hmm. someone who should be in the house of representatives or the senate if those are the pr decisions you're making <laughs> what kind of law decisions are you making yeah exactly i guess not good let's yeah. look into this person's other behavior and see if they're appropriate elsewhere yeah definitely not Next speaking of that speaking of looking and drawing connections you see that drag queen who got arrested for 25 counts of child pornography of course i just it would be remiss if we didn't mention that yeah literal child predator drag queen Oh, and it was like an award-winning drag queen, like who had counseled LGBTQ youth. Yeah. yeah. Counseled them. It's usually how it goes. And if you want to pretend otherwise, you can just wait for the, the articles to come out. Let them watch your kids. Yeah. Moving on. Florida Chicken Man. Yeah. This is pretty good action. Yeah, this was a funny one. One day when Nick says the rooster followed him and attacked him. His neck flares up and he's doing his thing and he's trying to jump up at me. He was trying to get the animal away. And I try to hit it, but the chicken's jumping up at me and I accidentally knocked it in the head. You know, call it a lucky shot, whatever. But when Dave Felice came home, all he saw was his rooster dead in a ditch. I said, I'm calling JSO. I called JSO. JSO didn't do nothing. Then a couple of days later, I, I realized I could call animal control. And in late June, James Nix went to jail for animal cruelty. Next thing you know, he calls the chicken police on me. While the neighbors continue the fight, Nick says he never should have been arrested. Chickens are dying every day, people, at churches, Popeyes, chicken, and Kentucky chicken. Fried Chicken. That sounds like our friend Grantly. <laughs> that there. sounds like Grantly. Chicken. Uh, yeah, never should have been arrested. Uh, very much a Florida man situation. Yeah. This type of guy. When I was at Martha's Vineyard, I saw kind of similar. I saw a buzzed head beard guy with tattoos smoking a cigarette, yelling at some fat lady in pajama pants holding a baby. <laughs> and I told my parents, I'm like, you see that? That's like everyone in Florida. Yeah, that's Florida. <laughs> that's Florida right there. Uh, moving on, this next uh, story, I want to say is my favorite story of the episode. But it's the one I'm most excited to talk about. Okay. There were targets that are used in a police firing range in Michigan. Yes. And the targets are of people with guns or the same person, the same picture, but holding a cell phone or holding a baby. And they swap them out and have all these different scenarios. And then you shoot the targets of the bad guys with the guns. Mm -hmm. uh, they took a picture of two of the targets, which were black people. Mm-hmm. And then released it and we're like, racist Michigan police shoots black people targets. They're targeting black people, whatever. And everyone's freaking out. Baller alert posted on Instagram. And they said, at this point, racism is getting heavier and heavier. As if it's so hard. And then we read the article. Two of the 12 pictures that you fire at the target targets, variations. Two of the 12 target variations are black, 10 are white. And that's in line with the, the percentage breakdown of the, the percentage breakdown of the population. Of the city. 
So of the city's demographics, that's the percentage breakdown. And so so it's like, what, you can't have a black person in a target as a target? I guess that's what they're saying now, which is insane. Which is weird. Because, so, well, I'm going to actually say, go ahead. You can't you can't use white people now if you're black. Oh, so I just made that decision. That would be racist. It's racist. You can't fire. And it's like, oh, are black people not doing any crimes and the police are training to attack black people? Let's pull up a random city in Michigan. I don't know. Detroit. <laughs> hey, Detroit. What is the what, what percentage of the violent crimes are committed by black people? Well, uh, I, I have the Detroit murder rate by race here. That works. Let's look at that. Black and African-American. Eighty eight point nine percent. Interesting. Eighty eight point nine percent. So it's basically that's like, high. That's very high. That means that 10 out of the 12 targets should be black, not white. Yeah, right. Nine of 10, basically. Nine, nine, of 10, nine of 10. If you go based on the demographics of people committing the crimes. Yeah. But it's racist to shoot any black targets. You can only shoot white targets, even though the people committing crimes at higher levels than their racial breakdowns in society are black people. 80, almost 90 percent of the murders in Detroit are done by black people. Why wouldn't 90 percent of the targets be black people? I, I don't know. That's what you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. It's, I, that's racist. It's, Racism gets heavier and heavier every day. It's like, hey, buddy, the target practice the police are taking is not the problem in Michigan. I would say the 90 percent black murder rate is. Yeah. I would, if I'm I, weighing the two, one's pretty heavy. One's pretty light. <laughs> one's one's about a piece of paper. The other's about people dying. Yeah. So yeah, the racism's heavy, but you racism's know, heavy. So man. is the death toll. And then the and then the, the the head of the police had to apologize and say like we're taking a look at this. This is not acceptable. Blah blah blah. And it's just like oh, you can't you can't make black people a target. You can't treat them like any other race, specifically by how they're broken down racially in society. So if it's twenty percent of the population. 20% of the targets are black people. You can't do that anymore. One of the funny things is uh, they have these, like the same guy, like the model or whatever, who the guy who's the image they're using, the black guy. Um, they have him holding like a can of soda and then like a cell phone too. Mm -hmm. So it's like supposed to be like a training exercise where you go, nope. Don't shoot. He's got a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like if you if you had a bunch of white cops just shooting at the guy with the cell phone, I'd be like, all right, what are they up to? But it's like, dude, it's, yeah, you shoot the black target no matter what he's got. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be racist. And then the white guy with the gun, you go, hey, what's that gun for? What are you doing? Yeah. Put, put it in the Put it down. I'm yeah. <laughs> the guy, he's got a cell phone. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Is that what's going on? Is that what's going on? It's ra the racism's getting heavy. Baller alert. Yeah. I, dude, I don't know. I like when they do stuff like this because it just makes more people go, huh, they had the percentages right. You just took a picture of it and then you caused a stir online. So I, I like it. It actually exposes people. Like yeah. if that's the if, if that's racism getting heavy, then America's in pretty good shape. Yeah, you're all good. We, we it's over. These people want to be victims so bad. I guess they just want to really blame white people for, I guess, the yeah, the li and, the life, their quality of life or something. I I guess so. It must be racism holding me back, not the fact that I can't do like finance. Yeah, it, it must be racism, not the fact that I don't don't know SQL, mm -hmm. or like, or I can't just you know be an engineer. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, exactly. That murder, the murder rate, the 88 percent or whatever committed by black people. That's not a problem that we should look into. It's the police training. We should make the tr police. It's the train. police paper training. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd be like, yo, is the are the police hitting it? Are the police hitting the target? Imagine if it was like all over the place and it's like, dude, they haven't even hit the target. It's like, <laughs> that's a problem. There's there's so many more levels of real problems before who's the guy on the piece of paper. It's so true. Well, that's what people are worried about. And that's why we have a podcast because there's a lot fun. to talk about. There's a lot to make fun of, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun. All right. So we're moving on. We're getting into our next clip, which is actually very sad. It's the crying World War II vet who basically realized the country isn't what he fought for. And people don't realize what they have. They bitch about it. And then nowadays, I am so upset that the things we did and the things we fought for and the boys that died for it, it's all gone down the drain. Our country's gone to hell in a handbasket. 
You're going to kill this guy because you want to be trans. You're going to kill this veteran because what? you want to pretend to be a lady. Yeah. You're going to kill him from heartbreak. Literally. And it's like we always, everyone says you have to be nice to trans people because they're suicidal. What about our veterans? Yeah. Who didn't fought for no lady to go act like a man. This guy watched his boys die. So you can go sit, put on a lady outfit and say, I'm a girl. Call me a girl now. What about our veterans? Disrespectful. Yeah. Sad for the World War II guys. It's like 2016 to 19 as an old veteran would have been like a time, like, I don't want to oh, say yeah, yeah, a yeah. good time to die. It's like yeah. kind of a dark statement. But it's like if you're an old man veteran and you saw Trump take over and America get on the right course. Getting can, back to our values. You can kind of like, you can kind of go in peace. Yeah. Now these guys, whoever's left from World War II is seeing what the country is. And it's like, you're going to not, you're going to die sad, which is horrible. Yeah. Poor guy. We love our veterans. I respect that guy. We can't get too down. We can't get too down. We that's have even, to be up. That's not even urban decay. That's like, that's American societal decay right yeah. there. Which is basically what that section has become. Yeah. But don't fret. Do not let it keep you down. There is some uplifting gold. This week's uplifting gold section, as always, is brought to you by our friends at Gold River Trading Company. Guys, if you're looking for high quality tea products, if you're a tea drinker already, Gold River Trading Co. is the place for you. If you're a new tea drinker and want to try something different, this is the place for you as well. Gold, GoldRiverCo.com. They have fantastic products, a very high quality, tastes great, and it's owned by America First Patriots, which is obviously the most important thing. You guys are buying drink products from coffee beans, Starbucks, the grocery store, wherever. Why not buy it from people who have your best interest? Why not support a company that's up and coming and shares your America First values? GoldRiverCo.com. Use code FLECUS for 10% off. And as always, send me a screenshot of your order for a coin flip 50-50 chance of getting a free base mug. You send me a screenshot of the receipt, I will flip a coin. And if it's heads, you're getting a free base mug. And if it's tails, I'll flip it again. I'll flip it one more time. Wow. So we're going to increase the chances. Unprecedented levels of promo right now. <laughs> unprecedented level, unprecedented levels of promo. If you guys are supporting the show, we're going to do everything we can to support you right back and get you some more cool products. Tea is a cool hobby. Yeah. Boston Tea Party. It's very American. It's very patriotic. It's in our roots. It's in our blood. Get some today. GoldRiverCo.com. Gold River Trading Company is the company. We appreciate their support. Show them how much we appreciate it. Go check them out. Links are in the description. Let's get back to Uplifting Gold. Okay. So first clip of Uplifting Gold. Let's start with the broken leg kid. This kid's got a broken leg. And his dad's home. And he's running to go see him. He's got that little broken leg. Why is his arm out like that? Is that his balancing? He needs a little balancing. Yeah, that's that hilarious. Leg. And then that's it. That's like a nice, you know, that's a nice American scene right there. That's something that veteran fought for. That's worth that's worth millions of dollars right there. Little kids running at you. Yep. Calling you dad when you're coming home from a business trip. That's pure Americana. Pure Americana. And yeah, that veteran from the last segment should watch Uplifting Gold. And I think he'd feel better. Yeah. But maybe not every uplifting gold because sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes it's not uplifting gold at all. Yeah. It's just a bit. Next clip, blackjack, big bet, uh, blackjack. Blackjack hand, big bet for the big man. Yeah, he's big putting, bet for the big man. He's putting everything he's got on this hand, which is relatable. You know, you're playing all day. You're up. You're down. You're kind of burned out. Some bad beats. Some decent wins. Assuming those are twenty-five dollar green chips and then five dollar reds, that's like uh, two thousand dollars, maybe, on one hand. Yep, I the, like that. The dealer calls the floor guy over to see if he can. Bet yeah, it. always a good sign. Ace, ace. Good luck. 10. 21. <laughs> That's the dream. That's that is the dream. And I know the feeling. You're down, you're up, you're down. You're having a long day at the casino, and you say, you know what? Let's just put all the money on one hand and either have a great day at the casino or let's go home. Yeah. So that's probably a 5K hand or something like that. Yeah. Right? Definitely been there. Uh next clip. Have you? <laughs> 5K hands? <laughs> Not no, 5K yeah. hands, but I've definitely said, you know what? Let's just put it all on one hand and see what happens. What happened? Uh, usually lose. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a situation like that where I've done a true double up. So true. Yeah. I don't want to get into my gambling. <laughs> um, Maybe in bonus land. Next clip. Uh, Playboy Cardi. 
someone I've never heard of, uh, falls off the stage. Yep. So he's going backwards. He's walking backwards, doing a little walk. Oh! And what do we always say here on the show? You don't walk backwards on stage <laughs> when you're doing a performance because the stage is nine feet high. <laughs> Is that what we always say? <laughs> no, if you play things backwards, it's not as bad. Life is about perspective and the way we look at things. One man's brutal stage fail is another man's grand gravity-defying entrance. 70-inch vertical. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> show. Yeah. <laughs> We're having a show. We're back, baby. <laughs> Oh, man. Next clip. Fight with the bird. This guy's got a little bird arch nemesis that he sees every day. Comes out to his car. And this my car. Fuck you. Every Fuck you. 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 So this guy fights with this bird every day. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. But I would argue that that bird is his friend. Yeah, those are boys. Those are boys just beefing with each other, right? The it's bird like, stays and lets him get close his mouth. Yeah, get that bird's car. your get friend. That's like the guy in Harry Potter who you think is bad the whole time, then he's the good guy who was loyal and had your back and didn't, you didn't even know. True. It's like that. I don't watch Harry Potter, obviously. I don't even know who you're referencing. The guy with no nose, I think. Snape? Voldemort? <laughs> you know the names? Draco Malfoy? Oh, jeez. Malfoy's dad? That's so like embarrassing. The bad guy from The Patriot. <laughs> You're the one who's <laughs> referencing Harry Potter, dude. Well, I've never seen it or I known anything about it. I read the book in fourth grade, and that's where it ended. One book. I got the book given to me, and it was like the same age, and it was very popular. And I put the book under my bed, in between my bed, uh, my mattress, and the box spring. Yeah. And then I said that it got taken out of my backpack by somebody. Because it was back when it was like super popular and like my book got stolen, I said. So you wouldn't have to read it. You wouldn't have to read it. I don't like shit like that. Star Trek, Star Wars, Harry Potter. It's all stupid science fiction. I don't believe in it. <laughs> That's fair. That's fine. I think there's value and good and there can be good stories. But the way people go obsessed and go crazy is obviously a dark, slippery web yeah. of lies. Nice. Moving on, Ilhan Omar got booed off of the stage, or booed on stage. She didn't even leave for 10 minutes at a Muslim concert in Minnesota. Yeah. So they had a Muslim concert in Minnesota. I with, think it was a Somali concert. Yeah. Like, and they're all Muslim. Uh, yeah, yeah. Muslim. So Somali concert, they had Ilhan Omar on stage, and they booed for 10 minutes straight. And Ilhan Omar is out there going like this, trying to get everyone to, all right, come down, come down, I know. And then they just did not stop booed her the whole time it makes you wonder who voted for her yeah i thought that was who elected her i thought that was like the swing electorate now yeah. now you're telling me it's just white women liberal guilt white women so now i don't buy it now i think there's some fraud going on immediately yeah, maybe guess if i had to maybe guess i would guess you that... can't astroturf a crowd mm -hmm. right that's the lesson here trump gets you know a crazy good crowd they go wild ilhan omar you and can't what is, fake it. What is supposed to be your constituency, you cannot fake it. Um, my thing is, I was extremely happy when I watched this video for the first time, is a lot of times when someone gets booed, there's cheers and boos, and it's kind of just like a deeper, darker cheer. But this was like, it got to that, and then it went boo. Yeah. <laughs> just like this. Full, full boo, undeniable. And it's interesting. Obviously, we're always convinced that the Muslims are marginalized people they're oppressed they need democrats to save them or whatever and it's kind of like a peek behind the curtain like a heat check and it's like eh, the muslims aren't even on ilhan omar's side well th that's part of what the left does is they get the uh minority or the the ethnic like particular person you know and obviously there's a somali community in minnesota and so they get her and then do whatever they want with her. They do the the same mm -hmm. Democrat agenda that they airdrop into small town USA, all that. And it turns out it goes against the Somali identity, which is yeah. Muslim. And it's like, yeah, no, we don't. We kind of don't support you at all doing just what the white leftists want you to do. A hundred percent. So it kind of becomes that weird thing where it's fake, you know. Um, and then they get exposed. It's like you in live time see it. You can do this from a stage. You can do this on social media. You can do this from your office. Mm -hmm. But when you're in front of like 5,000 people who are just 
purely reacting to you being on stage, it's like you kind of get a heat check for what your constituents think about you. Absolutely. And you kind of see behind the curtain. And yeah, uh, maybe we got a bad uh, Muslims got a bad rap, I think. I've, you know, we always yeah. think 9-11, Muslims, whatever, Muslims are whatever, not good people, people would say. I don't think that Muslims uh, allow any drag queen story hour. Uh, yeah. The Catholic priests are talking about abortion and gay marriage and how tolerance. And it's like, no, buddy, that's against our religion. And Islam actually stands up to it. Where yeah. Christianity is just which, like, no, which I we, respect. We, we have the globalist pope. We're Catholic. Yeah, I respect that. But we're always, yeah, we're always told that, you know, Muslims are this group that's so different from us. But it's like, that's weird. As conservatives, we're almost aligning more with Muslims than we are with whatever Ilhan Omar and the Democrats are up to. Hey, they play defense. They're trying to protect the kids. They don't they don't fuck around with when it comes to like no degenerate shit. Degeneracy. Yeah. So that's something I can respect and I can admire from another group without becoming a Muslim. Yeah, still don't really like the religion. But yeah, <laughs> not a huge fan of the religion in general. Of the ideology, but in politics, it seems like we have the same enemy: us and the Muslims, which is interesting. Taking us to our last clip of uplifting gold, a prayer. We're going to end it on a prayer, a NASCAR prayer, though, <laughs> a Ricky Bobby type prayer, though. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for all your blessings. You said in all things give thanks. So we want to thank you tonight for these mighty machines that you brought before us. Thank you for the Dodges and the Toyotas. Thank you for the Fords. And most of all, we thank you for Roush and Yates partnering to give us the power that we see before us tonight. Thank you for GM Performance Technology and the RO7 engines. Thank you for Sunoco Racing Fuel and Goodyear tires that bring performance and power to the track. Lord, I want to thank you for my smoking hot wife tonight, Lisa. My two children, Eli and Emma, or as we like to call them, the little E's. Lord, I pray you bless the drivers and use them tonight. May they put on a performance worthy of this great track. In Jesus' name, boogity, boogity, boogity. Amen. That's the boogity, boogity, boogity. Let me add just his little bit. Good for him, man. Yeah, for his smoking hot wife. I pray for my smoking hot wife as well, wherever she is out there. I pray for her. What do you think she's doing right now? She's waiting for me to find her. She's sitting alone in a dark room, waiting for me to knock on the door and say, <laughs> "I'm ready. To, I'm ready for. I'm ready for marriage now." I'm sure she is. Yep, absolutely. Well, another Puckus Talks in the Bucks. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Shop Puckus.com for the best merch in the game. Patreon.com slash Puckus or YouTube. Join for Bonus Land. We have a fantastic Bonus Land coming out on Monday, an extra 20 to 25 minutes of the show. We have some good topics this week. Space Hoax, Gavin Newsom, another What Happens Next, Deep Fake Tom Cruise, who Rap Boy wants to kiss, stuff what? like that. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribed and also support our sponsors, Public Square, Brave Books, Gold River Trading Company, all listed in the description, all sponsors of the show, friends of us or friends of yours. Keep them happy. You keep me happy. You keep the show alive. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one.